Hi, I'm Nina Lopatina, Lead Developer Advocate at Contextual AI. I am joined today by our CEO and co-founder, Dawa Kila, on the fifth anniversary of RAG. And specifically, I'm referring to the archive submission of a seminal publication, Retrieval Augmented Generation for Knowledge Intensive NLP Tasks by Dawa's research team at Facebook AI Research, later presented at NeurIPS 2020. Let's reflect on the intervening five years and future of RAG. What was it like five years ago when you and your team were developing RAG? Yeah, it was a very different world. Uh, so at the time, we didn't really have language models. Um, we didn't really have vector databases. Those were just starting to emerge around that time. Um, so in a way, I think we just got very lucky where all the components were really ready uh, to have generative models that you could give some context to, and then they could generate useful text or somewhat useful text. Mm -hmm. And then we had uh, vector databases. So Face, the Facebook AI, uh, I think it was image similarity search uh, library, which was really the predecessor of all the, the vector databases that emerged afterwards. And so we put those two pieces together and then showed that you can swap out the ground truth um, and, and have the answer correspond to that ground truth. And that, that's really, what RAG was. It was a very simple idea, right place at the right time. Yeah, that's great. I remember generative language models at that time. <laughs> they were indeed a bit limited in their a usefulness. A little bit limited, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, did, what uses did you envision for this technology? Yeah, so it was really about trying to decouple the underlying knowledge from the generative model. So, so the, the vision we had was that you could decouple language and reasoning from knowledge and then change the knowledge on the fly and then have the, the generative model just sit on top of that knowledge. And so that, that has all kinds of nice properties where you can uh, make sure that you're always up to date. So obviously the ground truth always changes. So it's annoying if you have to constantly retrain the model. Uh, that's just the most obvious one. There are nice other things coming out of it where you get proper attribution. So you know what the underlying ground truth, like piece of information was that you're using. Um, and, and so, yeah, it was really just about trying to see how we could ground these language models into uh, an underlying knowledge source that, that you can use in, in interesting ways. That's great, very useful indeed. And did you foresee any challenges at the time? Uh, I mean, we definitely didn't foresee it becoming this much of a mainstream idea, I think. Uh, but yeah, so, so I think some of the challenges still exist actually, where um, after the init initial publication, we were like, okay, we actually force the language model to not have any knowledge at all, because then you really decouple those two things and you can always manipulate the knowledge as you see fit. You just ha have the retriever be the smarter model actually, and have the generator be the dumber model. And the retriever does most of the work to contextualize the language model. And the language model, all it can do is just talk about it and it doesn't know anything. Mm -hmm. uh, but it turns out that talking about something and having knowledge are, are very closely related. And that's why that, that didn't really work out. Uh, but I, I think a lot of the, the challenges around how you get language models to properly focus on the context and nothing else and not hallucinate, uh, those are still kind of open questions. That's a very good point. And what has surprised you uh, most about the AI ecosystem and how RAG has evolved in those five years? Yeah, I, so I, I think what people call RAG right now is not really the RAG from the paper anymore, right? It became a very generic term around just frameworks where you have language models and retrieval as a way to give context to those language models. Um, I, what, what has surprised me is kind of the, the cottage industry that, that emerged where just lots of people are doing um, uh, very complicated system architectures with, with Tweaks, you know, I never expected, for example, chunking to become so important. That, that didn't really feel like an interesting problem to solve at the time, but obviously it's super important for, for RAG to really work. Mm -hmm. That's very true. Yeah, uh, I gave a talk at a, a meetup all, that was all focused on chunking. So yes, it is yeah, it's, it's something it's, it's, that people care yeah, about. Deep area of expertise for lots of folks these days, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what have been the most impactful new developments in RAG over the last five years? Yeah, so, so uh, like I said, right, I, I think the, the RAG architecture right now is very different from what we were doing at the time. 
and, and most modern rag systems, they start from doing extraction the right way. So getting lots of documents, unstructured data, making sure that that information is accessible by your retrieval pipeline to begin with. Because if you extract the information in the wrong way, then you can try to retrieve it, but you're not gonna find anything useful, right? So this observation, and, and that's really something that at Contextual, we're always thinking about is systems over models. How, how can you make sure that all these different model components work together as a system so that you can solve the problem? Um, and, and there are really just core components of modern RAG systems that you need to have. So good extraction, uh, hybrid search, so not just vector database, but different types of retrieval strategies, uh, re-rankers, uh, you name it. So all of those parts kind of come together in modern RAG. It's very different from, from what we used to do uh, five years ago. It is, yes. There's been a lot of components, a lot of specialization. And, you know, five years out, what do you now think RAG will look like uh, five years from now? Five years from now, yeah. So, um, I mean, uh, obviously agents, right? Uh, they're, they're, uh, RAG, I think, will still be around. It will just be used by agents. And I think there will be RAG agents that are very good at uh, working on top of your data, and then those agents will work together with other agents. So the, the concept of RAG is so generic, it's, it's like the G is basically the agent that can do things, but that still needs to work on top of your data. And that's why you need the R, the retrieval part, uh, in order to make it work. And, and so I, I think that's a, um, there, there are lots of interesting uh, innovations happening, I think, across the industry right now around how do you make Gen AI work on your data and how do you leverage retrieval uh, in this new paradigm of having test time compute, longer context windows, MCP, multi-agent uh, systems, all of those parts, they all, all fit together very nicely, I think, in a very interesting uh, sort of uh, technical future. That's true, yeah. What do you think that UI will look like? in the next few years? I think the UI will, will, will be completely natural language, I think, um, mm -hmm. and, and at a very, very um, high level of abstraction. So right now you have to be very specific if you want to have a specific thing. Mm -hmm. um, but in the future, you can just give a kind of general idea of what you want, and then the, the language model or the agent can figure out how to turn that into something useful for you. Mm -hmm. um, so you can t really take that to the extreme where maybe the idea of an, an application is going to go away because why, why do you need to have an application for reviewing uh, legal contracts if the thing you actually care about is like, is my contract correct? Mm -hmm. Right. So that is a very simple natural language question that you can ask and then the system can just figure it out and say yes or no and explain why without you needing to have like a full blown application for that specific use case. So every single use case is its own application that is completely custom and the interface is just language. I look forward to this simplified UI future. Yeah, it's going to be great. And then what's the most common misconce misconception about RAG that you've encountered? Uh, by far the most common one is that people think that RAG is easy. Uh, and, and so I think it is easy uh, due to sort of amazing open source frameworks. If you have like a few documents, very easy use case, very easy questions. If you don't care too much about accuracy, if you only have one use case. Um, but in the real world, where, where especially with larger companies, you have potentially thousands or tens of thousands of individual use cases that you want to solve. They need to sit on very complicated data. The data is all over the place. There's like version conflicts, like real data is just messy, very yes. messy. And uh, yeah, to, to make sense of that, uh, uh, you need to uh, uh, you know, uh, build, build better solutions and that's what we do. Yeah, very true. Now let's do some quick fire questions. Is RAG dead? Uh, uh, so if you want to find the answer, then uh, uh, check out isragdeadyet.com. Uh, so we have a, a blog post about this where we explain that uh, RAG will never die. Uh, uh, so in all seriousness, I, I, I think uh, a lot of people talk about these types of dichotomies where it's either RAG or long context or RAG or fine tuning, or now it's MCP or RAG. Uh, what we explain in that blog post is that you should do all of those things uh, in, in the same system, and that's how you get optimal performance. Mm -hmm. And then what is RAG's superpower? Uh, always being up to date. And if you do RAG the right way, uh, then uh, being more accurate. What's the most overrated RAG technique? Ooh, uh, I don't want to piss people off too much, but I haven't really seen graph RAG work yet. 
Hmm. Maybe that's edgy. Maybe maybe Jay is going to tell me to take that out. But uh... <laughs> edgy, pun intended. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, most underrated rag technique? Um, I, I, so I'm really excited about agentic rag and just rag agents in general. I, I think this, this test time compute paradigm is incredibly exciting. Um, and, and it just opens up the path to active retrieval much more, where, where in traditional rag, it was always passive retrieval. You get the query, you get the relevant pieces of information, you give them to the language model, the language model answers, which is very, very static, right? And so if you really want to uh, uh, solve important problems, then you want to be much more active and say, okay, this is the question. How do I figure out the answer? Let me figure out the proper plan. Let's ex execute on the plan. And then maybe I have to revise the plan because uh, you know the third thing I retrieve is actually completely wrong and I need to re rephrase the query and then get more information. So that type of like dynamic uh, query path. I, I think that's very exciting. And, and uh, yeah, we're, we're just starting to, to really uh, see what that can do. Yeah, a very exciting time to be in this space for sure. Uh, what is one skill that every developer using RAG should master? Uh, so uh, I, I think the, the main skill um, any, any modern AI developer should master is, is uh, the ability to very precisely describe what you want. Right? So basically mm -hmm. just prompting in exactly the right way. And so mm -hmm. you can prompt different parts of our system. So you can prompt the re-ranker, uh, right? Mm -hmm. Which you can do with uh, other re-rankers, but ours can follow instructions. So you can really tell it what you want. And I think, um, uh, yeah, that's a real superpower for, for modern AI developers. And then the rest is really just thinking about how you take this, this incredibly powerful piece of technology and how do you put it into this broader solution that actually delivers value. Right? And, and so uh, in the end, all this excitement about AI is not just for messing around, it, it's for delivering value and actually uh, yeah, uh, changing the world. Yeah, prompting is a great skill overall. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess you didn't expect this paper to get the traction that it did, so you probably didn't spend a ton of time on the title. Uh, what would you name RAG if you were naming it today? What's wrong with the title? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. so we always joke about the, the name RAG. Uh, it was kind of a code name. And it's kind of funny, like a rag is like not a, not a like important thing, I guess. Like that's sort of what it captures. But at the same time, it's a very sticky name, and I think that's why people have started calling this design uh, paradigm rag to begin with, right? So uh, it's called rag because it's an easy name to remember. Um, so yeah, I, I guess if I could uh, go back in time and come up with a more accurate name, then it would be probably uh, contextual AI, which is the name of the company. So that's a that's good sequence, I think. <laughs> Thanks, Dawa, for joining me today and catching up on the history of RAG. My pleasure. <laughs>